I've had a lot of people tell me that you're really hard to get a hold of in the industry. <laughs> I was like, yeah, man, I'm kind of like out of service a lot of the time and just putzing around, trying to keep myself busy and motivated. I think it was like my senior year of high school that I discovered punk rock, rock and roll music, and this whole like garage rock, surf rock, punk scene. And then I just picked up a guitar when I was 16 because my some buddies of mine would just do drum circles and smoke weed and I felt left out. It became so much more and then it became like, man, I really want to get like a multi-track and like a reel-to-reel. I think it was like June 14th, I just made the trip to LA in the, in the truck. So I moved out there and I brought all my music here with me and decided I'm going full-fledged for music. And I was like, I'm, I'm done with the whole, like I'm trying to fit in and impress this person or that person or whatever. I'm just, I'm just gonna make music, do the best that I can. That definitely got me in the, the gist of, all right, this is, you could, if you did this all the time, you could make enough money to like continue to do this. The affirmation for myself for, for wanting to do this was like for fame or money. Like those are the two reasons that you want to be successful, right? I really don't want fame and I don't want money. Like I'm fine making what I make and I'm able to like surf every day and eat like a few eggs from Whole Foods and like continue to sleep on the streets and have like a great time. But I felt more alive than I think I ever have. Surfing, I feel like, is the closest you can get to perfection on Earth. And getting in the water and just being involved with the ocean is like, it's almost too good to be true for this planet. And then just went down the coast in this little tiny Ford Explorer, and I would just surf. And I would like just enjoy myself. I found myself the most in those six, seven months. I mean, if I could like go back to that, I would go in a friggin' heartbeat. Like, those are some of the best days. It was raining in LA, we recorded. I think I was just flipping through my phone for a little bit, maybe like mess with some audio stuff from the day. And I hear a knock on my window. And I look over and it's someone with a black mask and a pistol in their hand. Open up the door for him and he asked me for everything that I had. Then he was like, open the door for my friend. There was another one of them with a gun on the other side of the door. And the guy, that I was next to just kept hassling me for it, which felt like an eternity, but it was probably only like a minute. And I told him I didn't have anything. Like I had car keys, you know, debit card with maybe like $200 on it or something. I think I said it twice. I said, dude, I live in my car. I'm basically fucking homeless. And then he said, I respect that. And he handed me my wallet back and they left. And that was it. Like, as I was driving away, I couldn't feel my legs, and I couldn't feel my arms, and then I was just shaking. I could not sleep. You know, like, your, your heart's still pounding, and you're like, dude, why are you so scared? That's not a big deal. It happens to people, like, every single night. From then on, it just got weirder and weirder and weirder. Every day, it just got stranger. Am I, like, losing my mind? knocking sound or anything that resembled like the knocking of a gun on a window just sent shivers up my spine and I like I just I felt like a maniac but I think what made it so intense was the fact that I had nobody you know <sighs> it's one thing to go through something really really difficult but it's another thing to go through something difficult completely by yourself yeah i just miss being me like when you're yourself for 20 years and then all of a sudden you're not you're just like am i gonna be like this forever well, i was still so alone too so i was like i'm gonna get a dog so i just kept searching craigslist until i found a australian shepherd in 
trailer park or something in the sand in Fresno. But then the next day we woke up, she slept perfectly on the couch that night, no barking, no whining. And she like went off leash a few times, which is crazy. The first day with her, trek through the woods, it was awesome. I'd been saving up money to buy a truck because I've been living in this tiny little Ford Explorer for over a year. And also it was where the incident had happened. So it was just like a constant reminder of what had happened and constant trigger for me. I found a Ford F-250 with a pickup camper on the back of it. I just worked, renovated the thing every single day and it took me one whole month to do it. I recorded a couple songs in the scent of that month and one of the songs was Sometimes. I can like, feel my strings like rusting as we speak right now. And thank God I put it out, because after putting it out and finishing the camper, I like pitchfork added it to one of their playlists. And then all of a sudden it was like on this playlist and this playlist. And then it was like at a million streams. And all of a sudden I was, I stopped having to walk dogs. The camper was great. And I recorded songs that for two more years. And so that definitely got me to want to get a tiny house and like get a real roof. To be able to have like a actual music studio now is awesome. And I think that through that time, through the process of, you know, having a mission and like wanting to get something done, I was beginning to come out of the, the deepness, just the thick days of, of PTSD. Still to this day, I can't lower my head in my truck at night and like look at my phone. I feel super vulnerable in those moments, but when a dog is sitting right next to me, perched up, looking at every corner that she can, making sure nobody's coming near, it's like super comforting. There's two things that really helped me get out of intense anxiety every day, one of which was surfing. And then once I picked Sadie up, she was just the company that I needed. And I would have guessed that a dog would have filled the gap of loneliness, but it certainly did at that time. She's a freaking lifesaver, sent from the heavens. <laughs> She's an awesome freaking dog, and I love her very much. When I think having the truck with the dog, I just want a mission. We were on our way to Portland, and we just fell in love, dude. It was. It reminded me so much of Tennessee. We just started calling Oregon home. I would just write a song and then go on an adventure that weekend, come back. Maybe I'd write out in the woods or something. Coming out of the trough of, of PTSD was just an awesome journey. Getting a suitable home, dog, community, and getting out of a place that I just wasn't too fond of. My band name is Goth Babe. It helps me not take things too seriously. Sometimes.